nothing but a community builder also yes if you are a beginner approach explore aws core services here itself in, with ngc there is a difference between a difficulty and challenging learning aws can be challenging but it doesn't have to feel a difficulty so especially if you are a passionate about the technology nurture a curiosity for the technologies you're working with and you might find the challenging skills become easier here in our ngc webinars now our uh, spectacular people with a profound knowledge share their entity you not only gain uh, wisdom you also gain knowledge there is one search person in front of us over in our platform that is who has taken out the time from his a tough and a busy schedule and is sharing his knowledge about amazon web services so now i'm very much professionally overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce our chief guest of the day he is mr kolai amy i'm sorry sir if i spelled wrong uh, actually he merely requires an introduction though he is a well known for his work in the domain of amazon web services actually he graduated as a research assistant and workshop instructor from the university of ibadan and also he worked as a technical support analyst in global idea solutions being an analyst he performed more than 15 on site visits to provide it support services to his business partners and not only this he had experience in the test chair course instructor in the pantrio integrated services uh, which is in uh, in the domain of uh, in the domain africa that is in africa test center icdl and also worked as a cloud system engineering in ultra commerce private limited and coming to his education he was done with his btech and msc in the domain of agricultural and environmental sciences from the university of ibadan and if i want to extend this it will be going like this only and i need another hour to introduce him clearly so we can't allow that much time as we were permitted to one hour for the session uh, so Uh, we can't say at least in a ten minutes or fifteen minutes about the speaker because that is the speaker of the day today. So now I'd like to call upon our Mr. Kolyam Mani to discuss on Teams. I would like to request everyone to kindly cooperate with us throughout the program to make this happen successful. So please be muted. If anyone having any doubts, we'll provide you time for that. So don't rush. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Kolyam, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, sorry, it's it's still morning right here. So <laughs> I was gonna say good morning. Ah uh, no, sir. We are in the evening position now. Okay. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank. Can Can you all see my screen? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Screen is visible. Can I go? And, and yes, sir. And just a minute. And I'd like to thanks to our Sudhir sir. He is an MSc coordinator. Uh, so because of him, uh, the scope was collaborated with AWS webinar that is going to happen now. So yeah. Dr. Sudhir sir also is here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welcome, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome, Doctor Sir Kolayami. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. I really appreciate uh, the invitation. I'm glad to be here uh, to share, you know, my my little knowledge uh, about uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm very passionate about AWS. Uh, I would say it has really changed my life. Uh, you know uh, about. Twelve years ago, uh, I was, you know, as this as you read during my uh, during the introduction. So I, I was really into uh, networking, uh, you know, computer networking. Learned a lot of like uh, Cisco and uh, CompTIA network, and uh, do a lot of uh, routing and all of that, you know, uh, on prem about two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. So when I got to know about AWS and uh, what you can do with it, with the power of, uh, of you know, of Amazon of the cloud computing in general, it really blows my mind. And um, so ever since then, I've been very passionate about it because uh, I was privileged to 
know what IT industry looks like, uh, like, you know, 15, 10 years ago, and what uh, cloud computing has brought to the table, you know, to really brought about a uh, digital uh, transformation. So uh, as, I've, as I've said, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Muyuwa Kolayemu. I'm a platform engineer uh, you know, with Slalom Build uh, here in the United States. And I'm also a AWS community builder uh, where I get to you know, uh, come around build community, talk about AWS and you know, uh, just share our passion about AWS with our community. So I'm so glad to for this invitation that you brought me into your community to uh, share my knowledge about AWS. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, I will be just quickly taking us to, uh, you know, little background, you know, what does IT industry look like before cloud, right? Before, you know, the, the AWS, Azure, Google, and all of this, like, what does it look like? Uh, so I just I was able to just you know get some few information do some uh, research. So in the world of IT, you know then company had to store their data, their business application. You know they have to store it in hard drive. You know server. You know if you go to every organization, every business they have what it's what is called strong room, right? Some people call it server room. You know. It's, you know is where all the you know servers are running. You know, there's a lot of heat that is being generated. You know, there's a network engineer that is creeping the cable. There is system administrator that is you know managing all of those servers. And, you know, everybody are playing their role, and it's it's really overwhelming. You know, uh, you know, I, I was able to do that job. Uh, you know, temporarily. You know, in 2009 and 2010. So I know what it what it looks like. It's really overwhelming to be able to like manage, you know, all those servers, right? And one thing about that before uh, cloud computing, you know, when organization, let's say uh, some uh, some organization that deals with uh, e-commerce, right? When they are, you know, they have high traffic, high requests for their product, you know, what it means is they need to increase their, you know, the capacity of their server. So at that point, most of the time, they heat up, you know, buy more server, you know, and, you know, add it to the strong room, to the server room. And whenever the, uh, maybe the traffic is also low, people are not really buying that much, maybe it's, it's off season, right? Then that servers that they bought during the, uh, during the, the peak season, now is just, you know, blind follow, in the server room, they are paying for electricity, they are paying for, you know, uh, cooling costs, you know, just to like cool the, the strong room, the server room to cool it down. You know, they are paying for lightning and all of that. So it's not sustainable, right? It's, it's, it's very costly to manage. You can't scale at, you know, at your, as, as, as you want. You know, you can't say, oh, business is not really doing well today. I want to reduce two servers. Oh, business is doing well today, or maybe in the next week, I'm expecting high traffic. Then I want to move to like 10 servers. Before the cloud, that is not possible. Even when you do that, then you incur cost on those additional uh, server that you, know, uh, that you bring in during the peak season. So with that model, you know, a lot of variable costs and you know, uh, fixed costs, you know, company has to you know, how to, how to manage that. They have to you know, pay for the space where they are keeping the server and all of that. So whether they are in use or whether they are not in use, you continue to pay for that. Uh, so that's, that wasn't really uh, sustainable. And now the days of cloud, you know, uh, virtualization has really helped us, you know, to create a virtual machine that acts like a real computer, you know, with a full operating, uh, operating system you know, when those emerged, it's really, you know, opened us to the, uh, to the world of, you know, cloud computing. Now you can, you know, you can create a virtual private network that is like a rentable service, right? So when that happened, when you can now create that virtual, that from the virtualization that now help us to create a virtual private network, now that led to development of what we now call, you know, the model for uh, cloud computing. 
So the next thing that you know that comes from that is that this model, you know, it really, you know, uh, it embraces, you know, you to have your server, you can create your network, you know, your storage, development tools, you know, and all of those applications. They had now been enabled by what is called web services. You know, on internet, you can literally request for server, for development tools, for, you know, networking, all of that via the internet. So when that is been you know, that was achievable and that was when AWS, you know, come into play. And from the world, it's called Amazon Web Services. That is, you know, all the services that Amazon are able to provide via the web service, via the internet. So, and why AWS Cloud? You know, in my heart, like, why are we talking about uh, AWS Cloud today and why not all other, uh, you know, our cloud? They are all good, they are all doing great. Uh, but why I'm very passionate about AWS is because, according to uh, Ron Miller from TechCrunch, I actually like you know lift the word and quote it. He said AWS was the first organization to market with a modern cloud infrastructure service when it launched the Amazon Elastic Cloud uh, Compute Cloud in August 2006. So they were the one that actually started. They were the one that was able to launch you know what is called virtual machine and that we'll be doing a deep dive, you know, into today. So AWS uh, EC2, as it's called, you know, Amazon Cloud Compute. So the, we, uh, the two C there, we call it EC2. You know, that was actually the, the, one of the core services of AWS that help, you know, people to virtually have access to servers, right, via the internet. And that is why I'm very passionate about this uh, topic because I believe AWS EC2 is actually what gave uh, the cloud computing model. It's like a gateway, right? A gateway to, you know, to the world of cloud. You know, when now I know we have, you know, we have containers, we have uh, Kubernetes, we have all of those good technology, but they, all of those started, you know, from when the EC2 was able to, you know, come to life. And now we can build upon those technology and even do, you know, many cool stuff like, you know, containerization and Kubernetes. So, but for today, we, we'll, you know, approach this in a beginner friendly way. Let's start with the AWS EC2, which I believe is one of the core services and the gateway even to cloud computing uh, general. So now with your EC2, you can instantly deploy applications, right? Now, you can, you know, you can scale up as you want. Maybe when you notice that, uh, you know, you are expanding or, you know, your, your e-commerce is, you know, is there, uh, there's a lot of you know, traffic, there's a lot of customers that want to buy products on your website. When you notice that, oh, I need uh, two servers is not enough for me. But now because you're on AWS, in just two, two, three minutes, you can literally request and scale up, you know, you know, four or five servers, you know, so that really, uh, you know, bring up different and diverse, you know, what you can do with, uh, uh, with, 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 with your application now that is in the cloud, you know, using AWS EC2. So, you know, whether you, you need one server, you know, or thousands, you can literally continue to run this, you know, anytime. And when you are done with it, you can shut it down, you can scale back to, you know, to two servers that you are current, like that you were running before you notice that there's a peak in your uh, in, in the request. So I just want, wanted to like give you know brief uh, information, like a big uh, background about AWS EC2. But before we move on, you know, to really deep dive into AWS EC2, we also need to understand what are these service types that AWS have. So there are three major service types that AWS offered. So we have what is called managed services. We have what is called fully managed services, and we also have serverless services. So the managed services, that is where you actually have our uh, EC2. So any, any service that AWS offered that gives you access to the, or the, or, or the underlying operating system, that is, you can, you know, you can remote login 
into the server, into the infrastructure, and you know, do some infrastructure management tasks, you know, like backup, like patching, you know, that maybe you want to repair, uh, you know, the uh, the infrastructure. So any service like that is what Amazon classify as managed services. And EC2 that we'll be talking about today is one of that. So there's also fully managed services. So fully managed services are those that you don't have, AWS doesn't grant permission for you to have virtual access into those underlying operating system and, you know, and the server. And so what will happen is that AWS help you to manage those uh, infrastructure management tasks, like patching, like backup, they take backup for you, you know, at, you know, you just specify, you know, on the, on the AWS console, whether you want your backup to happen, you know, 11.59 uh, midnight, you know, you can specify that and AWS will make sure that happened. So we have example of, you know, many services like AWS uh, relational database, you know, uh, yeah, RDS. And so it's one of the example of, you know, fully um, managed services. And the third one is the serverless services. I'm sure you must have heard about, you know, serverless, you know, does it mean there's no server? You know, that's the, you know, the question that first comes to mind when people hear serverless. No, there's still server only that AWS is abstracting that aspect to you. You don't need to interact with the server. You don't, they manage everything, even the scalability, even the capacity provisioning, you know, the automatic, automatic scaling and patching, AWS handles all of that. So you just only bring your code, then you can run it, you know, on AWS. You just only specify what you need, then AWS will, do the capacity provisioning for you. Example of that is AWS Dynamo, uh, uh, Dynamo DB, they are, are non-SQL database, and uh, like also Lambda, you know, which is also a very powerful uh, serverless services. So, but today we are focusing on EC2, which is uh, one of the managed services that AWS uh, provides. So we will be able to actually have, you know, interact with that uh, server and see how things are going. So, you know, uh, from the topic of today, we are like, you know, we said AWS EC2, you know, a beginner approach to explore AWS core services. So it would be good for us to just touch base on those uh, AWS core services. So the way AWS categorize their services, you know, apart from the service type, they try to like make a collection of service, you know, in, into each, uh, each domain. So for compute, you know, when you need the compute power, we're talking about EC2, we're talking about Lambda, you know, and the likes. Uh, for networking, we have, you know, a VPC, you know, virtual private cloud that you can actually like, you know, have your own private network that you can create as an organization, you can create your own private network. You know, as we mentioned earlier, that now you can, you know, uh, we have virtual private network, Rentable as a service. Right, so we also have storage. You know, before I, in my first slide, I, I explained how organizations are to like, you know, store their applications and their data in hard drives and you know, physical server on their premise. But now you, you, uh, you, the cloud also avail you the opportunity to store your data, you know, and even the, with enormous capacity, you know, it can, can even like, you know, expand as your as your uh, as your business grows, you, uh, your storage. You know, definitely what you are storing, maybe the the list of your customers, the information of your product, as it continues to grow, then even the storage, your storage in the cloud can grow with it. So it's also elastic, right? So and we also have database. Where that's one I was talking about the relational database, uh, RDS by AWS and DynamoDB. We have analytics, you know, maybe we want to do, uh, you know, an, an, uh, data analytics. We have all of that management tools, developer tools, and security and, and enterprise applications. So, and I've just given, uh, you know, the symbol, the logo for those, uh, those services. You can see on the left, we have Amazon EC2, the VPC uh, for the storage, uh, S3, uh, simple, storage service is yeah is very powerful 
you can use it for your storage. And uh, the, the other one is the RDS, uh, the R, uh, relational database, and also DynamoDB. So just you know to give you uh, a, a little tip into that. So why we are here? We are here actually because we want to explore uh, Amazon EC2, right? As I've said earlier on, you know, it's a, it's a web service that provides a secure and resizable compute capacity in the cloud. Don't forget. Before you, be, you are when you have a server room, right? You even when you resize, you can bring you know bring that because once you you know you purchase those those server during the peak period, now you have to live with it. You have to you know uh, incur the cost for maintenance and all of that. But what EC2 actually brought to the table is that it provides you with a very secured and resizable compute capacity. So do you need uh, 10 server? Yes, you have it in five minutes. Do you need to reduce that 10 server to two servers? Yes, you can do that within a very you know, short limited time. And uh, yeah, even when you feel like, okay, I, there's a concept in AWS that we call uh, vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. So vertical scaling is when you, uh, when you have to like add um, you know, more servers, then you can scale vertically. Then when you need to, maybe just those two servers that you are still using, but you need to increase their capacity, their size, then you can change the instance type because AWS, is, uh, the is Amazon EC2 have different varieties of, you know, uh, capacity and, you know, even with the CPU, you can specify whatever you want. If you have a very, uh, heavy workload that, that will need memory optimized uh, uh, compute power, AWS provide you with all of that. And if you are a small business that you don't really need, uh, you know, highly uh, memorized, uh, me uh, memory intensive uh, workload, yeah, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, AWS uh, EC2 engine that can also serve you. We were talking about like the likes of the T2 Micro, T2 Nano, that a lot of startups and business are taking advantage of, you know, as a small business. So now with the power of AWS, uh, Amazon EC2, you can host, you know, your web application, whether it is a static website or dynamic website, you can actually do that, you know, with, uh, with the Amazon EC2. And one cool thing about uh, EC2 also is that, although AWS have their own Managed database, but if your business, you know, uh, requirement uh, required you to have the database, you know, have access to the virtual data, uh, the database for you to manage it. Yes, you can also host your database on a a Amazon EC2. So that is very powerful. You can see how just being able to understand how Amazon EC2 works, how it also give you opportunity to explore all other AWS, you know, services. Because when you are provisioning uh, Amazon uh, EC2, you need networking, you need storage, right? And if, you, if your business requirement require that you have database being managed by your administrator, then you can also have host your database. So by just having a good understanding of of Amazon EC2, you can see how it ties even to security because now you have to like make sure you create a firewall for your server. So now you know about AWS EC2, now you know about networking, now you know about storage, you know about uh, EBS, elastic uh, block storage. You know, you, 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 if you want to you know, back up your data also, you can, you know, then you want to talk about AWS S, uh, Amazon S3 bucket. So just being able to like expose and you know learn about AWS Amazon EC2, it touches on a lot of AWS core services, and that is why you know I uh, will be doing a very uh, short hands-on, you know, to appreciate uh, you know what you can do with AWS uh, Amazon EC2. So I know uh, I saw in one of your uh, the previous uh, webinar that uh, you had, I think in September by uh, Dr. Milani. So you, uh, she introduced you to uh, 
Amazon, AWS Educate. So I've been using AWS Educate even with uh, some of our students uh, from University of Ibadan, where I, uh, I conducted a eight weeks uh, training. So uh, today we will also be uh, you know, exploring AWS uh, EC2, Amazon EC2 from the AWS Educate, just to see what you can do uh, with, you know, uh, with the power of EC2. But I will say that, yeah, on your own layout and you want to learn more, it's free. I will say register on AWS Educate and you know, play with this lab, provision the EC2 server, you know, and see what we are talking about and see for yourself and see Amazon EC2 in action. So for today, uh, we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna like just, you know, show you, uh, you know, a self-paced lab that was developed by AWS uh, for learners to practice Amazon EC2. You know, one of the key things that we'll be doing in this uh, self-paced lab is to have, give you an overview of how to launch EC2, how to resize EC2, how to manage it, how to monitor it, you know, in case something goes wrong, then you want to troubleshoot and debug. So the tasks that we'll be actually be uh, doing briefly today, we'll launch a web server with a termination protection, we'll monitor the provision EC2 instance, we'll modify the security group, which is the firewall, right, for the web server to allow HTTP uh, access. We'll also resize the uh, EC2 instance and we'll test if the termination protection that we actually put in place, if it's actually you know, uh, working the way it should. So I will pause uh, my uh, presentation for now and go to uh, AWS Educate. But I want to pause here before we transition into, uh, into that lab and show you uh, what you can do with EC2 and, uh, and achieve all these tasks. Uh, yeah, so these are the reference, uh, a lot of, uh, information that I put in my slide, uh, these are the uh, references that I mentioned. But I want to take a pause here and uh, give opportunity to for you to ask questions, you know, before we uh, move into the self-paced lab. Or if you want us to go to the lab and come back for questions, it's okay by me. But uh, I want to pause here and uh, hear from you guys. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, no question. Should we move to the to the lab? Give me one second to So uh, are, you, are you familiar with AWS Educate? Yes, sir, some of us. Okay, good. Yeah, I will still try to, uh, you know, explain, so, uh, you know, what I'm doing so that you can actually, uh, yeah, follow along. So uh, one of the, this lab uh, from AWS Educate uh, from the introduction to Amazon EC2. So we have, uh, as I shared in my, uh, in, my, in my slide, you know, these are the objectives that you want to achieve. You want to be able to launch the server, monitor the EC2, resize it, and then also test the termination protection. Uh, so I will just uh, start the lab and so that AWS can give me uh, provide me with a temporary AWS environment where I can actually do uh, this lab and also follow the instruction. So, but okay, yeah, I think it's, it's ready now. I can go ahead and 
open the AWS environment. So I'm now in the AWS uh, environment, the temporary uh, AWS that was uh, created for me in this lab. Right now, I don't have anything. I'm currently in the uh, EC2, but I don't have any uh, server uh, running. So uh, we're going to launch EC2 instance. then uh, I, th I believe uh, it will be good for us to follow the, uh, how they want us to, the name and you know uh, what they really want this to look like. So I know they want the name to be a uh, web server. So we have our EC2. Yeah, and that is a uh, web server. Um, it's always good to add a tag. So we are adding a uh, volume, which is the uh, the storage to our uh, this is supposed to still be name. So and that is a volume. So now we yeah we have put EC2 name and the volume that the storage that I want to attach to this uh, EC2 server. So one of the things, uh, you know, for every server, there's always an operating system, the host, you know, that runs, you know, in your, in your server. So for this lab, we'll be choosing uh, Amazon uh, Linux 2 then yeah, we just leave it at default. And for the instance type, so we are going to go with a T2 micro that will give us, you know, a one gigabyte memory and one vCPU. And it's also in the free, uh, free tier that, you know, allow you to, uh, to practice. So for the keep uh, peer login, because we'll not be actually, you know, remote login into this server. So uh, we don't need to create a key peer, but if we have to like do this, uh, we need to like create a key pair, but we will proceed without a key pair because in this lab we won't be, uh, you know, uh, SSHing into the server. So now uh, by default in this lab, they actually create a network, a network infrastructure for us, which is the VPC. And then we can edit that to make sure that we are using the lab VPC and it gives us the subnet, the subnet, uh, public subnet and private subnet for this. Uh, for now, I will, I will choose the security group. Let's still use uh, default, but we still need to come back and give uh, access, HTTP access uh, for, our, for our server. So yeah, so we have, we configure our storage, we leave it at default, which is uh, eight gigabytes. And then 
Uh, they want us to also make sure that there's termination protection on this server. So uh, we we'll go to enable termination protection. So uh, I'll go here and then enable termination protection. Yeah, so on our uh, EC2 now, we actually want to use it to host, you know, a, just a very uh, mini uh, website, you know, web application. Uh, then we'll be using uh, a code that was created uh, for us by AWS, where we will be able to, um, you know, launch HTTP server and it will, it will run and it will, you know, uh, install itself and also we'll be able to just, you know, output a very simple uh, information from the web server when we log in. So this is the way you actually, you know, uh, bootstrap uh, uh, EC2 machine is using the user data in, you know, in Amazon AW, uh, EC2. So what this code is actually doing is to uh, run, install HTTPD and uh, use the system control to enable that uh, web server and use the system control tools to start the web server. And this line is just going to uh, echo output uh, whatever we put in here, you know, in HTML form. And it will pass it to the, uh, you know, to this, uh, uh, to this pass system, you know, this uh, part in our EC2 machine, which is going to be under bar slash uh, www HTML index.html. So we can change this. We can, uh, yeah, we can change the name, whatever we want, uh, you know, to, to have the, I think I would like to change it to this so that we know. I can do that, yes. So let me copy first. Yes, so here is where I will have the user data. And then I can now change the word that will output. Okay, now with this, uh, we, we are we are ready. If I want to uh, have you know many server to be spun up immediately, I can increase the the number of server you know from here. But I will leave this as one, and we can also see the summary, uh, you know, of what we are doing. It's T two micro. We have the firewall configured, and the and this uh, storage is also configured. So by just clicking this, we are, you know, requesting for, you know, server, virtual server to be launched for us. And let's, oh, there's something happened. Launch initiation. Oh, let me check um, what happened there. Yes, I have this. Terminate enable. Yes, I think I'm good. Oh yeah, I've seen uh, the problem. There was a uh, duplicate name tag. I uh, fixed that. Uh, so let me launch now. Okay, it's. I think we are good. And uh, I want to be mindful of my time because uh, AWS Educate will log me out. Okay, so I still have 28, 27 minutes. Yeah, I believe we'll be able to uh, finish up this. 
So we can now go to uh, to the web server and see what we have now. So yeah, it's still pending. We just we just create this, and now you can see that we, in less than uh, one maybe two minutes, we're able to you know uh, uh, launch our server. But that doesn't mean that everything is working. You know, we make some configuration. We the way to test this that is actually uh, everything is working is to check the status checks here. Yeah. So we'll come to status checks and we'll see if the system status is running and also the instance status checks is passing. So we can see that, yes, they are both passing, they are both running. Then, uh, yeah, we should be able to have our uh, our server, web, web server, you know, uh, you know, outputting what we put in, in the user data. But I know we're gonna run into error because we've not expressly uh, given the uh, firewall access to uh, HTTP, uh, to run on this. So according to the instruction, now they want us to, once we, lo once we launch the server, they, they want us to check, you know, if everything is running and we've done that. And now they want us to monitor the instance. You know, that's one of the tasks that we want to do uh, today. To actually like check the state uh, the status, and we've done that. We can see that both system checks is passing and instance state is passing. Another thing that we can also use to you know really monitor like what is going on, you know, is what we call uh, AWS uh, Amazon Cloud Watch. It helps us to like you know watch what is going on inside your server. You know the storage, the networking. How are people you know trying to have access? To that, we also can have a, a VPC flow log, you know, how people are trying to access the website. You can have access to that. But on this lab, we uh, we can use the system log from the instance to actually know what is, you know, what is going on with our server that we just provisioned. So if I go to actions, I can, I can go to, uh, I don't need to go to manage instance. I can just go to here and I can click get system log. So with this, I'll be able to know what happened. The command that I ran, you know, on my on my system, you know, how, how it worked right from I should be able to see it's not showing me anything, it's giving me a blank. Uh, information, but I should be able to see how the the console output what we ran. But let me see. Maybe something is wrong. Well, we can check. We don't create. Yeah, we don't have access to. Remember, we don't. Uh, we we actually didn't give. Uh, we didn't create a key pair, so we cannot access this. But I'm going to troubleshoot this and see why we are not getting the uh, the log because we're supposed to be able to get the log. You know how the HTTP was installed, but it seems that is not uh, the case now. Something might be uh, wrong, maybe when we provision our server. Let's check. Let's troubleshoot this together. Yes, it's, it's, everything is correct. Yes, I believe it's correct. So, let's see with the IP address, if we can.
Okay, so this is the public IP address. Let's copy the DNS and see if we can actually what we provision if it's running, which I believe it should not. It should give us error because we've not created the uh, firewall and it was part of the instruction. Uh, they just want us to see that when you don't give you know, uh, access to your server, the, uh, the, uh, the, those scripts that we've provisioned to install HTTPD, then there's no way it's gonna work. Yes, so this is what is expected. It's giving us that, yeah, this is not reachable because we need to check the firewall, right? So we even get the information right there. So from our, uh, from our configuration, we will need to give HTTPD access you know, via the port 80. So that's what we're going to be doing now. We're going to create an inbound rule. And we can do that by going to security group. You can see how, you know, just like working around uh, AWS EC2, you know, making us touch on different area of uh, AWS services. I want to be sure to, uh, the name they want us to give this. So uh, what's the name? I believe you can just give it any name, but I think they give us EC2 web server. Then what's the name that we should give it? I think it's web security group. So web server security group. Okay, web. Uh, security group, which is the firewall, right? Then we can create the inbound rule, and then this we we allow the HTTP here on port eighty. And uh, we also need to specify anywhere, then I believe we are good. So let's see what we have now. But we need to okay, give it instruction. A description rather allow HTTP access. Okay, so let's go back to. I want to make sure that this is now being attached to this. Um, server that we provision, right? So I can confirm that by actually uh, go to instance settings. Let me expand this to see. Let me go to security. So I'm still having the, the default. So I need to edit this to use the one that I just created. So this. So this is the one I created. So this is the one that I want to attach. Yes. 
So I think I'm fine now. Yes, so this is what I'm looking for. I need to change the security group from here. So right now I'm still using the default, but I'll, I'll need to remove the default, then choose the one that I created. For some reason, it's not picking the one we created. Yeah, so this is the one we created. It's called my web server. Yep. And the lab VPC that we want to attach it to is this. Now in the security, yeah, I'm still choosing the default. But what we can do, uh, if this, we can still have uh, another workaround around this, so I can edit the default. Yeah, so that, uh, yeah, that will still do the job. Can type HTTP. I'm trying to be conscious of the time here. But 80. Then hello. Hello. HTTP. I think we're good. We can save this now. Yes, so for the default now, we've attached, uh, you know, to allow HTTP on port 80 from anywhere. So I believe this should work now when we load this. Yes, you can see now we have a load from uh, next gen cloud club EIT. So this, if we are hosting uh, any website, anything, it is the only thing that will be different is you know, there is going to be more prettier. It's going to be like, you know, where you can pick your product, where you can click. But this is just an example of, you know, a simple, you know, a uh, simple website that you can create, you know, on your, on your, on your EC2. This is limited. It limits, you know, to how you want to design this. I've just, you know, quickly show you how you can you know, use uh, AWS to, where you enable the firewall, you know, to, uh, to do the, to provision a, a, a static website. This is a static website, a very simple one that just says a load from next gen Cloud Club VIT web server. So uh, I think the times we still have time uh, quickly to touch base on how to resize. So we can, you know, we can resize this server, we can stop it, we can resize it and change it to, you know, uh, you know, a bigger server from T2 micro, we can you know move it to T2 Nano, and we can also test, you know, whether the uh, the termination protection that we've enabled, whether it's, you know, it's working or not. So I can just quickly uh, do that, and then we'll move to question and answer. 
if uh, if there are questions, uh, you know, available for me. But you've, you've seen now uh, that you know our web server is working, is you know telling us what we actually you know pass through the uh, user data for us to do. So right now, uh, the next task that we want to uh, accomplish is to change this T2 mic uh, micro to a bigger instance. Maybe you know you now you need uh, you know uh, higher capacity to manage your your workload. Yeah, within few minutes you can also do that. That is not that is not possible, you know, in the traditional IT before you know cloud computing come into play. So with this, I can just go to action and I can change the go to instance settings. Then I can actually I need to stop this. So because we want to change the instance, then we can uh, actually stop it. So once it's at stop state, then we can quickly, it's still running now, but I need to be confirmed that it's actually stopped. Okay, so it's at stopping stage. So it is at this stage that we can now, uh, you know, change the, the size. So it's at uh, stopping stage. We can also come back here and you know change the those protection that we, we you know we can have a short down behavior you know enable we can have even stop protection that nobody will be able to stop you know uh, this this server so we can you know we can we have all those opportunity via the internet via the you know the web you know web services uh, now we can do all of that which is really super cool right. I was just going to, uh, while this is still in stopping stage, I was going to uh, quickly, you know, explore all that things that you can do. You know, you can check with, you've seen how we change the security firewall. You can even use this template now. If you want to replicate the same thing across board, you can come to our uh, image and templates. We can create image or templates from this instance, and we can use it to launch, you know, all other instances. There's a lot of things that you can do right from here. Yeah, we, I think it's still stopping. Okay, now it is stopped, so we can actually now change the instance. Now we can uh, change the instance type. So we want to move from T2 micro to, yeah, T2 nano. Now this one, the T2 micro we have is just one v, uh, VCPU, but with the T, uh, the T2 nano, I believe it has uh, more capacity uh, than I think it's two or maybe uh, one. I think it's two uh, gigabytes that, yeah, that has. Let me go to T. There's, you can see a lot of instances that you can provision that you can request. But let's go to T. Yeah, so T2 micro. Now we want to go to T2 nano. And we can just apply for that. Now, our instance type has changed. Like we've literally just changed that from uh, T2 micro to T3 nano now, right? And we can now start our server and we'll see whether we still be able to, whether it's still working. You know, our web server will still be working. It's still a stop stage. 
good. So now you can see, like, within one minute, we're able to come back, you know, from stop state to running state. And we can also always check the status, right? So we can see that the system status check is still initializing. And even the instance status check is still initializing. So it means now with the uh, with the script that we've passed into the user data in, in this EC2, now that we've changed the capacity, is initializing, you know, running the same thing on this new uh, T3 nano that we've provisioned. So we can see that the status check is still initializing. So we can just refresh to see the state. So it's going to take just like you know a few minutes uh, for us to get there. So now you can see that our web server is no longer available because yeah we we are we are updating our our instance. So but it should come online once the. Uh, the, the EC2 has finished initializing. So the status check is still telling us initializing. Yeah, it's taking a little while because we are moving from uh, a, a small instance to a big one. But yeah, it's definitely going to work. Yeah, while I'm continuing to do this, I don't know if uh, you guys have questions. I believe uh, we are now at the time. Well, I will try to see that uh, this actually, uh, you know, move from initializing to running so that we can see how things are going. Yeah, it's taking more time as expected, but is there any question? While well, this is still trying to uh, to run and as suspected, any question? I can take question now before we wrap up for today. No, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for today. I really appreciate the time. Uh, yeah, it was taking a little bit of time, but I believe, you know, I would say try to, you know, walk around with this, try to lay your hand on this, and you know, see the EC2 in action for yourself, and you really enjoy what you can do with it. So I would advise you to like uh, log into AWS Educate and do all the labs that they have. It will really uh, help you to explore. Uh, the services. This is taking uh, longer than expected, but I know my time is up now, but I really appreciate you having me uh, today. So uh, if there's no question, uh, I wish you uh, best of luck. Thank you so much. Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah, thanks, and, sir. Yes, and many of the people who... Hello, yes. Yes, I'm many, many of the people who want to ask so many questions, maybe because we were uh, disabled the mics uh, because of the distractions in the online mode, it may happen. So that's why we was disabled. So that's why no responses was there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you can reach me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn. If you have any question based on like what we've discussed today and you want to learn more, yeah, I'm happy to uh, respond to those questions. If you are on LinkedIn, yeah, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you will see me there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, guys, if you had any doubt, just if you raise your hands so that I'll be giving you access for the mics. Or else you can reach out, uh, the, uh, reach out the speaker in LinkedIn or any other. Uh, uh, we'll be providing you the LinkedIn details if you if you message in our bots or groups or else we'll be providing the LinkedIn details of our speaker. So you might uh, go there and you might have the conversation with the speaker and on your particular questions that what it depends. No problem. And and now, yeah, it's, it is now working. <laughs> it is working. Yes, now. sir. But yeah, but yeah, if there's no question, uh, we can move on and uh, close for today. Yeah, but just want to show you that Yes, everything is 
is working now. And then if we go and uh, refresh, we should be able to get the result. Uh, yeah, well, I just want to quickly show you that. But thank you so much yes, for, for having me here today. And it's our pleasure sir, that you accepted our proposal. Yes. And so guys, and thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us over here and thank you for sharing your knowledge. And um, the vote of thank will be handed over to us, Ravya. Yeah, so now I would like to express my vote of thanks. I extend a warm welcome to all the people in the gathering. I would like to express my gratitude to the esteemed delegate of the webinar, Mr. Kolayami sir, for his presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the entire NGC club and the VITAP University, I would like to thank the honorable speaker because the webinar can't be completed without your presence and appreciative words, sir. Extending my gratitude to the honorable speaker, to take out time from his busy schedule to grace the event. Thank you for inspiring and encouraging us with your words on this special day. A very special thanks to you, sir, for helping to extend the knowledge on the AWS domain. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, and a, a special thanks to our club faculty coordinator, Ganesh Reddy, sir, and as well our scope uh, coordinator, uh, Sudhir, sir, uh, as he was in uh, there now, so thank you for them and uh, extending a very much pleasurable thanks to our speaker, uh, Mr. Kolyami, sir, because you are accepted our proposal and it's, it is very benefited to our students in the IDAP. And thank you for that. Uh, so, guys, if you had any doubts, uh, you just message in our WhatsApp groups. I'll be sharing the LinkedIn profile of our sir, or our speaker on the domain of AWS or kind of anything. If you had any uh, career uh, plans in, the, in this domain, if you had any doubts, you can reach out to us and you can reach out uh, speaker simultaneously also. And thank you, sir. Thank you for joining. So I guess.